take control of your Google Meet. Earlier in our Meet series, we took a look at how to access a Meet. Today, we'll focus on the controls available to you as an owner host or as a co-host of a Meet. But first, let's get a grounding on what is the difference between an owner host and a co-host. A host is often the person who has created the meeting invite, and there is only one host per meeting. If you have created the meeting on behalf of the host, you can transfer host status by transferring ownership of the event in the calendar. A co-host is created by a host or another co-host. Any Google Meet can have up to 25 co-hosts. The co-host has many functions available in a meeting. They have almost the same functionality as a host, and this functionality includes host management features, including creating or removing co-hosts. Access management, including quick access, managing join requests, or ending meetings. Participant engagement controls, including locks for video, audio, chat, reactions and screen sharing, and locking down question and answer functionality. Activity controls, including breakout rooms, polls, question and answer, and attendance tracking. And access controls, such as meeting records and live streaming. So if a co-host has all the same functionality as a host, why are we concerned about the difference between the roles? Well, ultimately, the host has additional controls available from the calendar invite. Having these controls are key to preparing for meetings, trainings or workshop sessions. At the invite stage or any time before the event takes place, a host can manage access, control participant engagement, create co-hosts, and prepare breakout spaces. Now that we are comfortable with the differences between a co-host and a host, let's take a look at the controls available pre-meeting and in-meeting. Meeting hosts can prepare a number of options for a meeting, either when creating the event and sending invites, or from the event at any time before the meet happens. They can manage meeting access and participation, add co-hosts, and prepare breakout rooms. Accessing the settings in the event gives access to host management. Turning on host management opens a suite of tools to manage participant behaviour. Hosts can lock or unlock, present, chat and reaction functionality. For privacy, quick access can be turned off. This will require any participants not specifically invited to the meeting to request access when joining. Attendance tracking is available on some editions. Toggling this on will provide a detailed report of joining and leaving times for all delegates. Lastly, activating host management will limit the ability to record meetings. When host management is on, only hosts or co-hosts are able to record meetings. Access the event in calendar. Within the event details, access the settings cog from the Google Meet details. The video call options pop-out will appear with the host control tabs visible. To activate the moderation controls, a host must first toggle on host management. They can now set the participants control over screen share, chats, messages and reactions. Quick access is on by default. Toggle this off for increased privacy. Attendance tracking, if available in your Google Workspace edition, will be turned off by default. Toggle on to receive detailed reports post-meeting. Co-hosts should be added to a meeting before it starts to ensure that all functionality is operable when in the live meet room. Hosts can potentially add up to 25 co-hosts. And as we covered, these co-hosts will also have most of the functionality available to the host. In the video call options, click the co-host tab. 
Type the address of your desired co-hosts in order to add. You now have the option to share call artifacts with co-hosts. This will include any attendance reports, recordings or poll results. Be aware if your meet recurs, artifacts from the subsequent meetings will also be shared while the user remains a co-host. Lastly, pre-meeting hosts can manage breakout rooms. As a trainer, this is an essential tool. Creating breakout rooms live in a call for a large group of people can be very time consuming and in that pressured situation, it is very easy to make mistakes. Within the pre-meeting, hosts can create rooms, name rooms and assign participants well before the meeting starts. Increase or decrease the amount of rooms needed in the rooms field. Use the shuffle button to randomly assign attendees to rooms and the clear button to remove participants from rooms to reassign. I highly recommend naming your breakout rooms. This can help twofold, either as a reminder of the discussion topic or for post breakout debriefs. As in my experience, participants will remember the room name better than the room number. If manually adding participants, you can drag and drop as well as typing in participants' names. Now let's see what we can achieve in the meeting. All the functions that we have seen in the pre-meeting period are available in the live meeting. The host control icon will give access to the host management. The people icon allows for co-hosts to be added or removed in the meeting and the activities icon gives access to the breakout room setup functionality. Additional meeting controls that are only accessible from the live meet include advanced participant management, access controls for admission, and mass mute options. Management of the Q&A functionality and initiation of video call artifacts. Engaging video or audio lock removes participants' ability to unmute or to turn on their camera. Co-hosts will be unaffected by this lock and are able to reactivate video and audio for all. It's possible that some participants can be removed when the lock is engaged if their device does not have the most updated version of Meet or Gmail, Android OS version M or newer, or iOS version 12 or newer. Audio and video lock can be engaged from the host controls icon. Access management. With quick access disabled, hosts can accept or deny uninvited participants. At any time, hosts can remove a participant or invite a new participant. Hosts can turn off all microphones in one click and a host leaving a meet can end the meet for all participants. This ensures that meets are not incorrectly used. All co-hosts will see requests to join centrally in the meet and can admit or deny that participant. From the people icon, access the participants menu to remove them from the call or access the mute button to turn off all mics. The end call for everyone option will appear to any co-host when they click the leave button. Here they can select to simply leave the meet room or leave and remove all participants. Hosts can turn off the Q&A function if not required or if using alternative software and can allow for anonymous questions. These controls are located right at the bottom of the host control panel. Anonymous questions are a really useful tool to encourage engagement, but be aware these are fully anonymized and even hosts will not have author visibility on questions. Lastly, streaming and record controls are locked up for participants when host management is engaged. Non-hosts will have no visibility on these functions. Co-hosts will access these functions from the activities icon. Remember that recordings and transcriptions can be shared to co-hosts if the host has allowed for asset sharing pre-meeting. That is a whole lot of functionality. Of course, co-hosts can manage all of the engagement activities as well. We'll discuss these next in our series.
Now you're up to speed with all the functionality available to you before your meeting and in the meet room. You've got an understanding of the differences between hosts and co-hosts. We've given some tips on managing your controls and we'd love to hear your experiences of hosting Google Meets. Until next week, take care. Thank you.